My name is Bill Cowan. We don't come to you as Republicans or Democrats or with any party affiliation. We come to you instead as Americans who care. Americans who care about our country and about our comrades in arms. We don't deal with failed leadership, false promises, and Washington double talk when American lives are at stake. But those are the exact problems that the Select Committee on Benghazi uncovered. I mean, Libya was a different uh, kind of uh, calculation. Yeah. And we didn't lose a single person. We didn't lose a single person. We didn't lose a single person. Single person, single person, single person. We honor the memories of Ambassador Chris Stevens, Sean Smith, Glenn Darty, and Tyrone Woods. Their families have dealt with the reality of their deaths because of their service to America. And this is the simple story of those men's reality on the ground in Benghazi. Our intelligence agencies knew that some of the rebels we supported were terrorists. Some were members of the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group. All of them were Al-Qaeda groups on the State Department terrorist list. One of the terrorist commanders was even a former inmate at Guantanamo Bay. The day before the Benghazi terrorist attacks, President Obama conferred with his cabinet to see what might be needed for the anniversary of 9-11. Hillary Clinton and Leon Panetta were present. Not a single change was made that might have helped those in the high-risk area of Benghazi. It was sudden, violent, and brutal. It was a terrorist attack. No one could have possibly known how long it would last. Glenn Dodery was in Tripoli. His comrades were under attack. He answered their calls for help and went to the sound of the guns. At 7 p.m. in Washington, Panetta ordered the appropriate staff in the DOD to initiate movement, some three plus hours after the message came in that there were Americans under fire. At a 7.30 meeting, Hillary Clinton's State Department requested that the Marines go in civilian clothes, no military uniforms and no weapons, in a war zone where Americans were under fire because they didn't want to look like an invasion because we didn't want to offend anybody. Really? And even before the final American deaths occurred, Secretary Clinton sent out a statement blaming it on a spontaneous protest about a video, while privately telling others it was a terrorist attack. Most folks don't take mortars to a protest. In the end, not one U.S. military aircraft, not one soldier outside of Libya was sent to Benghazi where a battle dragged on for hours. Washington never intended to send anybody to Benghazi. Americans don't leave a man behind. It's not who we are. It's not what we do. Yet we don't want our teammates coming home in flag-draped coffins because of failed leadership, false realities, and Washington bureaucrats who don't have their policies or priorities straight. We want them coming home with honor to their families and a grateful nation that can say, Thank you for your service.